You can be seated. Thank God for this opportunity. Give honor to Pastor Sam's. To his wife, Sister Sam's. To all the ministers, Ella Perkins. Mr. Floyd. All the ministers. Uh, I just thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for my church family, New Evangelical Bible Church. <laughs> I love this church. <laughs> and I love the people in this church. Thank God for you guys. Uh, I'm coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Verse 14 through 23. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 14 through 23. I just thank God for opportunity to proclaim his word. I thank God for his mercy, his grace. God has been good to me, and I'm pretty sure you, everybody got their own story, right? <laughs> All of us got our own story, what God did for us. And I try to keep those in mind, because when we lose focus on what he did for us, man, <laughs> I think we're in trouble. If you're out there on Facebook, I want you to know, if you're looking for a church home, New Evangelical Bible Church, 4636 West Washington, Chicago, Illinois, 60644, come on out. Sundays, 1030 to 12 o'clock, we practice social distancing. Uh, if you don't have a mask, we have masks. Hand sanitizer, come on out. Come and worship the Lord. Uh, we just want to make that invitation extended to everyone. First Samuel chapter 16. Verses 14 through 23. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Verse 15. And Saul's servants said unto him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Verse 16, let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that he will play it with his hand. And when the distressing spirit come from God is upon you, you shall be well. Verse 17, so Saul said to his servants, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Verse 18, then one of the servants answered and said, look, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who was a skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. And the Lord is with him. Verse 19, therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread and a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. So David said to Saul, I'm oh, sorry, verse 21. So David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. Then Saul sent to Jesse saying, please let David stand before me. For he has found favor in my sight. Verse 23, this is my key verse. 1 Samuel 16, verse 23 is my key verse. And so it was, whenever the spirit of God was upon Saul. I'm sorry, yeah. So, so it was, whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand, then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would what? Amen. Today my subject is the power of music. I want to talk about the power of music. That's my subject today. The power of music. I want us to understand how powerful music can be and what kind of music we should be listening to. I'm really, I really want to focus on the young people, but I see it's more than just young people. I see parents, grandparents listening to things 
There shouldn't be. We, we should be an example in front of the young children. The power of music. Every culture has its music. Every culture has its music. When you're looking at a TV show and you hear the certain drum beats and you say, hey, they're in Africa. This, is, this movie is going towards Africa. You hear the drum beats. You, you hear the little jungle and things of that sort. Uh, or another scenery will be drums and boom, 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 boom. Hey, that's Native American music. <laughs> Europeans, everybody, every different culture had their different types of music, you name it. Music can affect you. That's one of the things I want us to know, that music can affect you. It can affect you. Yes. Music can calm you. You can come in the house from work, play some music, it'll calm you down. Music, music can relax you. It can make you relax. Music can make you get emotional. Yes, yes it can. Yes. Music can make you get emotional. Yes. Music can make you cry oh yeah. oh yeah and music can also make you smile yeah. i'll never forget <laughs> on of uh, years ago in the 80s they used to have this thing called friday night videos <laughs> friday night videos uh and uh, uh cindy lopper you remember cindy lopper um girls just want to have fun come on now y'all remember that song and uh this is in the 80s but then she had another song, time after time. And they was playing the video. I was all into it. That video started to move me. She, time after time, she crying, and she on the bus driving off. And music, music, music. It can make you cry. It can make you emotional. It can move you. What do you think about the music today in our community in, in our culture. What do you think today about the music in our community and in our culture? Mm. Is it good or is it bad? It's not good. Do you think it's helping or is harming are young men and women. Mm. Amen. Amen. This music is promoting everything that's against God. The power of music. I just explained how it can move you, it can motivate you, it can push you. It's nothing wrong with Music per se, uh, it's what's the lyrics on the music. Yeah, yeah. It's a song, you know, I got kids uh, looking at Sesame Street. They get some, they get some uh, artists and they make a, a song or two for the, the kids and the puppets dance around them. And one guy called Will I Am, and he's got a song called The Best That I Can Be. And it's not religious, but it's motivational to me. I'm like, I could be eating. My daughter didn't start playing that song. I turned around, I'm like, whoa, this is a good song. Yeah. It encourage, it's encouraging. Even though it's not godly, but it was enc it's encouraging. If you're going to listen to some music, listen to something that, that for instance, I, I like rap music. Let me, let me go here. I like rap music. I was born in that era. You were born in another era. I was born in this era. Okay? I remember Ron DMC them and things of that sort. Yeah, that music changed from then until now, though. Okay? Uh, I, 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 I like rap music, but it got to be... But the music they got the day they rapping, I don't like it. They're not talking about nothing. They're not motivating the young people. They're not encouraging the young people. It's motivating them to do other things. The music that they're promoting today is against God. I had a cousin come here. I, 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 I had a cousin come here. 
His name was Wu. One time I preached and he came and I asked Pastor, I said, can he, he do, he got an album. I said, can he, I listened to the lyrics, it's biblical. Allow him to, Pastor said, he gave me the green light. That's one thing I love about my pastor. He gave me the green light, hey, and he performed in here. He did a rap song, but it was nothing but godly on there. And I tilt my hat to him because there's so many young people out here today that's rapping about selling dope. It's motivating people to want to be drug dealers. It's so many people today on these songs, everybody want to be a gangster rapper. Trap music. Drill music. And everything is against the law of God and God's morals. I want to attack this today. The, mo the song is motivating about selling drugs. God is not into selling drugs, destroying lives. Some of the music is about killing somebody else. God says, thou shall not kill. Some of the music, as I listen to it, yeah, because I used to listen to it. When I was in the world, when you're in the world, you do what the world do. When you come to God, you put the world to the side. God called you out from the world to bring you into his marvelous light. The music is selling dope. The music is talking about drop it, pop it, discriminate on young women. You're more than a twerker. You're more than just turning around and twerking and dropping it like it's hot. You're a woman. When a man see that, all he want is one thing. He don't want to marry you. He want one thing. That's it. The music is motivating men, young men, to be players and pimps. I'm a player. Look how many women I got. When God says, uh, he don't, he's not into multiple partners. He's into... One, he said, marriage is honorable in the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. The music, the music, the music is against everything God is against. Yeah, I've been there before, you know, sex outside of marriage, but that's when we was in the world. But when you come to Christ, he begin to change you, make you new. For the scriptures say, when you come to Christ, all things become new. All things pass away. Selling dope. Getting high to music. Yeah, it's promoting drunkenness. I'm not talking about modest drinking. The Bible don't speak against it, so I ain't going to speak against it. But uh, drunkenness. It's talking about the lifestyle of drinking. Drunkenness. The music is promoting popping pills. Smoking blunts, drinking syrup. The music is promoting gang banging, violence. Everything that God is against, that's what it's promoting. The power of music. But you say it don't affect me. Somebody say, hey, it don't affect me. I tell you, it do affects. Music moves you, I just showed you. It motivates you. It energizes you. It can relax you, calm you, make you smile, make you emotional, or make you violent if you're already mad. It's safe to say that this music is sinful and demonic and not of God. And I won't take it back. Yeah. It's sinful, it's demonic, and it's not of God. Yeah. Music, 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 the power of music. Music is powerful. Don't you kid yourself. Satan wants to communicate to you through music. See, he's only one individual. He has a kingdom. If I can get one guy and fill his head up with this mess and get him on a track and spread it, spread it, I can get it to all the rest of the young people. He wanted to communicate to you through the music. He wanted to communicate to you, young man, young woman, grandmama, mama, daddy, whoever you are, through the music. Whether it's rap, whether it's R&B, whatever it may be. You got to be careful about the things that you listen to. This is your body. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. He said, whatever go in the mouth, come out the drought. But whatever comes out the mouth, come from the heart. These people are speaking from the heart. 
And the way you let that in you is through listening to this. This is your house, this body. God don't want you to allow that mess in your house through your ears. It move you, it move you, it move you. I was riding down the street about a month and a half ago from work. And a guy pulled up on the side of me, beating. And he was playing an old song I used to listen to. One of them old rap songs. Next day I know my mind went back. I was in my old school sitting on big wheels. My hat was broke off and I had a cup in my hand. I was like, yeah, I should be, man, getting down on this song. Yeah, I have two of them in the back or, hey. And I said, the devil is a lie. I shook it off, rolled the window up, get back on track. You know, you get them thoughts now. Look at me. I said, I'm the one going to tell you the truth. You ain't going to tell it. I'm going to tell you the truth. That's how it was. But then I brought myself back. Bring them thoughts into captivity. Bring them into captivity. The power of music. That music started bringing me back. But nope. Look at us. Some say, I ain't got my scripture yet. But some say that the devil here before you get here. But he can't stay. When you praising and worshiping like that, he going to leave. He going to leave. But music, music, music is powerful. It can cause you to do things. It can influence you and motivate you. You got to make the decision. The devil is communicating through the music to our young people. He's looking for ways and strategies. Don't be ignorant of his devices. This is one of the devices of Satan. He uses it. All you hear in the hood is this garbage music. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with the rap itself. But the lyrics that you put on it, killing, selling dope, getting high, belittling women. I'm a player, I'm a pimp. Look how much money I got. Look what you don't have. Drop it, pop it. Yeah. Look how much money I got. My bank roll bigger than your bank roll. That's pride, pride, pride. God hate pride. Look at my house, how big mine is, and yours so little. Look at my car, how big it is, and you ain't got nothing. Get out of here with this man. That's pride. Yeah. That's pride. When you're saying pride, you're acting like the devil. The devil's full of pride. When you're saying pride, you're saying, look at me, look at me, worship me, worship me. Don't worship God, worship me. Pride. This music is not from God, it's from the devil. Satan want to communicate to you through the music. Listen to me, young man. Yeah. Listen to me, young woman. Some might say, ain't nothing wrong with that music. I can play that. I could play that. Nothing wrong with it. No, you can't play that. Something else wrong with it. All right. Music is powerful. It's all through the Bible. In the book of Psalms, you got 150 chapters of Psalms. Psalms is, we read it, but it was not read. It was sung. This is the hymn book of the Hebrews. Yeah. This was not read. They were sung. We read them today. But these were songs. The Bible is full of music, powerful music. Jesus in Matthew chapter 26, verse 30 says, him and the disciples sung a hymn. Yeah. Notice they never talk about how good Jesus can sing. <laughs> I want to, I don't think, I ain't going to make the Bible say that, I don't say. But uh, it don't talk about his singing, it just talk about his preaching. It is, uh, and his cooking, he can cook for them, I guess. And, but they say he sung a hymn. Him and the disciples, Matthew 26, 30. But it ain't about how good you sound. I can't sing. I can't sing like Miss Winters and the rest of these guys around here. Johnsons and Sams and I can't do it. But God inhabits the praises of his people. That's not my gift. Amen. I stay in my lane. But back to, but to the scripture. I got a few minutes. Open up the scripture. I want to prove through the scriptures that this, there's power in music. And I want to prove it from the scriptures. The Bible says, as we read from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23, and I told you 23 is my key verse. It talks about how Saul, how God told Saul, arise. I haven't forgot what the Malachites done to me. How the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt and the Malachites, the slaggers, the, who, the ones who were behind, who wasn't catching up, they would run upon them and raid them and kill them and do all types of evil to the children of Israel. God said, look, I didn't, I didn't forget what they did. Now get up, and I want you to go destroy all the Malachites. Every man, 
every woman, every child, every infant, every animal, everything that they have, I want you to destroy it. Now, you might be saying, man, look at God. What kind of God is that? That's a God who hates sin. You don't understand the deepness of sin. God hates sin, and sin must be judged. Sin must be punished. That's how deep sin is. That's how deep my sin is. That's how deep your sin is. We don't understand how deep our sin is. God is holy. And he calls us to be holy just like he is holy. Glory be to God. We fail. We fall short. But thank you, Jesus, for forgiveness. Thank you for your blood. He said, go and kill all of them. Saul got up, went over there. He destroyed them. He brought back Agag alive, the, the king. But he kept all the good stuff for himself. And the prophet came and said, you have disobeyed the Lord. He said, no, I didn't. He said, what's this bleeding in my ear? And all of this. And the Bible said, God had disliked that he made Saul king. He said, but I found another out of my own heart. I want you to get up, go down to Jesse's house, anoint me a king. And he went by and he passed all the sons by. He had seven sons, all seven passed by. And the Lord said, nope, none of them. But one of them saw a scene and he said, look, surely he should, he must going to be the king. Look how he looked. God said, uh-uh, don't look on his stature. Don't look on his appearance. He looked good and he was tall and handsome. And God said, for I have rejected him. For man look at the heart. But man look at the outward appearance. But God looks at the what? We got some Bible scholars around here. That's good. God looks at the heart. And here we go. He passed all of them through. David, David, David. He said, this all your sons? David was the youngest in the back keeping the sheep. He said, bring them here. He brought them and the Lord said, rise and anoint him. That's the one. He anointed him king, poured oil on him in the midst of his brethren. He the youngest. He had to be a teenager. Listen here, young man. David was a teenager. God anointed him king. Why? Because he had a heart after God. God wants the young people, not just the older people, he wants the young people too. He was the youngest, he was a teenager. And God anointed him king then, but now God gotta get him into the palace. It's like getting me into the White House before Trump. No, they were lower than me because the shepherd was the lowest. And the Bible says that, here we go, verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord left Saul. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David, and it never left him from that day forth. It said the Spirit of the Lord left Saul. See, the Spirit of the Lord left him because the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, in those days, he only came upon people to accomplish a mission. Not exactly for salvation, but it was to accomplish a work, and he would leave. He came upon David, and he stayed. It was for the mission of being king. In the Bible, says a distressing spirit from the Lord trouble him. If you read the other verses, it says an evil spirit, which is an evil spirit. Now, how could God allow an evil spirit? If God is so holy, why would he allow an evil spirit to come on somebody? See, sometimes God in his sovereign acts, or his sovereign purposes, allow Satan to act. He'll move his hand back and allow him to act. And he allowed him to be upon Saul for judgment. Saul was going mad. He was going crazy. He, was, he had disobeyed God. He was distressed. He was sad. He was going crazy, just going wild. And the Bible said the evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. Now, don't think that God won't do it to, a, to one of us or to those belonging to him. Hey, what are you talking about, Charles? You can't prove that from the scripture. Yeah. The Bible said, Paul said, I knew a man above 14 years ago who went to the third heaven. He was in heaven. He said, I've seen things that's unspeakable. I can't even express it. I can't, it's not even lawful for me to talk about. Paul, what he said, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but I know I was up there. And he said, I have boasted him. He said, but that I won't be, be prideful. I done went to heaven. Nobody else went to heaven but me. That I come down here and be prideful. There was a messenger from, Sa from Satan to buffet me. God allowed the devil to buffet his apostle who wrote 14 books of the New Testament. So don't tell me what he won't allow him to do to one of us. He allows it for refining. He allows it for disciplining. He allows it for putting us back on track. 
This is the reason God allowed it for Paul. He said, I asked the Lord three times to take this thing from me. And the Lord said, nope. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So through the scripture, God allowed Satan to attack Paul. Put a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble. To keep him meek. So God allows a, a distressing spirit to judge Saul. And look at verse 15. The servant said to him, look, what got me, his servants had a little spiritual, a little spiritual eye. They said, hey, surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you now. I would have just said the, the, the devil, but he said it's from, they realized that this was a distressing spirit from God troubling him. So he had some people, just let me know, he had some people around him that probably knew, that had a relationship with God. Now, just because he was evil don't mean everybody else was bad. Just because he stopped following God don't mean that everybody else stopped following God. In the midst of counseling, he had around him counselors and wisdom. That's why we need to be around one another. For we can identify when something going on. We can say, man, that's the devil. Or we can give a word of counseling, a word of wisdom to another. But you got to be around the right people. He was around the right people. They really, hey, this was from God, man. This is an evil spirit from the Lord. Now, I don't think none of us would have recognized or seen that unless God opened up our eyes to see it. Say, this is from God, the evil spirit. Now, I got a solution. They said, we got a solution, verse 16. Let our master now send servants before you to seek out a man who is what? Skillful what? Player. I'm, pl I'm playing on music. The power of music. A skillful man who's skillful player on the harp. And when he play that evil spirit from God, will leave you and you will be okay. That was the counsel, that was the solution. It's good to be around people who can counsel you. It's good to be around people that's of God. They'll get able to see through some things. Here King is who disobeyed God, was being judged by God. All Saul had to do was repent. That's simple as that, repent. Ask God for forgiveness and get up. He, the kingdom still would have been took from him, but yet he would have been right standing with God. God still allowed him to be the king for a long time. It didn't happen immediately when he took the kingdom from him. But they had an answer. They had a solution. And if, look at verse 17. Paul said, seeing he needed a problem, and Paul said, provide for me. You got to recognize you got a problem. <laughs> he provi provide for me. Give me this servant. So the answer was music, 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 the power of music. I would thought they would say, let us get a, uh, 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 somebody who can cast the devil out or something. <laughs> An exorcist or something. We see a distressing spirit following you and troubling you. Let's get an exorcist. No. They say music. So music must be powerful. Not that he had this uh, evil spirit in him, but it was oppressing him, troubling him. The Bible said it was troubling him. It didn't say it was in him, but troubling him. Uh, like us, we say the Holy Spirit is in us. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit dwells in us, never leaves us. In the Old Testament, he came, he left. The New Testament, he dwells in us. Now, the devil can't indwell neither, none of us, but he can oppress us. Get in your ear. And one of the ways he can get in your ear, if you allow him, is through music. He said, bring him, verse 17. Verse 18. Then one of the servants answered. One of them answered. Look, I've seen a man. I've seen a son of Jesse, a Bethlehemite. He's a skillful and plain, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech and a handsome person and the Lord is with him. People had already been eyeballing this man. Now this just wasn't no any person. This was a person who stands like in the White House almost. I just want to give it to you today. This man stood before the king. He was a servant of the king. He had a position. He had been taking knowledge of a shepherd boy. God had been ready, getting ready to transfer him into the kingdom. So he said, I know somebody who's skillful in playing. He can play. He can play music. And Saul sent messengers to bring David to Jesse, his father. Bring him. Let him stand before me. In verse 21, he became his armor bearer. He stood before him and became his armor bearer. He wasn't carrying his Bible around, okay? <laughs> he was his armor bearer. He was carrying his armor around. <laughs> Y'all ain't get that. You'll get that later. <laughs> he was carrying his armor. See, as an armor bearer, he can get close. He can start looking how a kingdom should be ran. He can start looking at Saul and see how a kingdom, a king should function. 
Amen. God was bringing him into the mind. See, your, your gift will make room for you. The scriptures say your gift will make room for you and set you before mighty men. A shepherd boy standing before the king. It wasn't his warrior. The Bible say he was, the man say he was a skillful player. He was a man of valor. He was courageous. He was a man of war. He can fight. He haven't even fought Goliath yet. I want you to get this. He haven't even fought Goliath yet. He fought Goliath in the next chapter. God had been setting him up, getting ready to bring him into a position. It was not his courageous acts. It was not him being a warrior. He can fight. It was not his good looks. The Bible said he was a handsome man. It was not his good looks. The Bible said the Lord was with him. It was the Lord was with him, and because of the music, the music, the music, the power of music that he got in there, it, where he was at. In my key verse, and I'm closing. And so it was, whenever the spirit from God, the evil spirit, was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. He would play the music with his hand. Then Saul would become fresh and well, and the stressing spirit would depart from him. Music is powerful. Two things that cause the devil to leave. That's the word of God. We see that in Matthew as he tempted Jesus three times. Jesus kept saying, it is written, it is written. And the Bible said he left. And the music from God. Verse 23. Every time he played, God was on the music. The music was anointed. The distressing spirit, the evil spirit, would leave. Play some godly music. Play some music that's, that's motivated. You want the devil to flight? Read the word of God. Play some Holy Ghost filled music. Praise the Lord at all times. The power of music. I just showed you through the scripture how powerful it is. It put the devil to leave. He didn't say he ran, but he left. I don't believe that he can stay in the place where you praise up and worship in God at because you are urging the spirit of God in. And with the spirit of God in, the devil is uneasy. He ain't comfortable. He know he got judgment coming. He leaves. He's coming back. Because in chapter 18, verse chapter 18 or 19, Saul, the Bible said they were saying, David had killed his 10,000. Saul killed his thousands. And the spirit of jealousy was there. And the Bible said the evil spirit got back in his ear. And David went to play. He went to play the music. But the Bible said Saul had a spear in his hand. He threw it and David tried to pin him against the wall. He didn't want to hear it. See, you got to want help. The first time, he said, provide me a man. The second time, he wanted to kill him. You can't let that devil be in your ear. I don't care what you play. If you don't want it, he's not going to receive it. But it's possible through the scriptures, praising God, the word of God, he's going to leave. Amen. And I'm coming to a close. Seventy-three psalms are ascribed to David. Seventy-three psalms are ascribed to David. It's 153, I'm going to say 150 psalms. Seventy-three of them are ascribed to David. I'm closing. If Jesus was in the car with you, would you play the music that you play? It don't got to be rap. I just chose that one. It's, it's anything, blue, whatever. Whatever the lyrics are, would you, would you play that music or would you turn the station? Think about it. If Jesus was in the house with you, would you play that music or would you turn it off? I got news for you. If you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he is in the car with you. He is in the house with you. He don't want to hear that. The Holy Spirit is in you. He don't want to hear that. Be an example to the young people. Be an example, grandmama. Be an example, mama. Don't let them. That stuff don't get no play in my house. I ain't gonna play that. Anyway, it, I don't, it don't get no, none of that play. It's gonna have to be something inspiring, motivating. 95% of the time, it's gonna be Holy Ghost filled music. And I'm closing. I'll never forget 1996, I was in the Cook County Jail by day gang banging. And it was Sunday. We're going to church. People went to church for different reasons, some to meet their boyfriend from a different wings, because church, different wings come in. Some to meet their boyfriend, some to meet other gang members, some to take care of their business in the church. But 
But this particular day, this man was preaching. 1996, March, he was preaching. He was coming with a good word. Stop the drugs, uh, stop the game banger, stop coming back here. He was preaching the word, he was penetrating me with the word. And then the lady sung a song, I never forget, and I'm closing, I'm sitting down. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me, Father, I pray. Send your anointing this way. Order my steps in your word. She began to sing that song. Glory be to God. She began to sing that song. And I was in there and I was looking. It got quiet. The Holy Spirit was in that place. The anointing was so thick in there, you can cut it with a knife. The power of music. And as she began to sing that song, my eyes began to ward up like it's doing now. My eyes begin to ward up, and I say, Lord, I can't cry in front of these men. And they begin to war, more ward up, and they start falling like a waterfall. But I looked around, they were just as humble as I was. Because the music, the music, the music had changed the whole atmosphere. God was in that place. Glory be to God. And from that day forth, God had been dealing with me. I can see, he'd been dealing with me all my life, but then I began to see that all the times he was with me. I begin to see, and he began to deal with me from that day forth until now. And I'm closing. The power of music. Start listening to something that's godly. Start listening to something that's holy. Invite the presence of God. Don't allow the devil in your ear. Watch you, what do you look like listening to the devil? Oh, I'm just listening to the music. I don't do what it say. Why you want to listen to what the devil got to say? He come to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't come to bring life. And look what happened to our young men, our generation. They're going to jail, in and out of jail. Look at us. And yes, the music is playing a part, whether you believe it or not. But if we play something godly and do the right thing in your house, in your car, as you've seen what happened to Saul, that spirit will leave. Glory be to God. I just want to leave you with that. In Jesus' name, amen. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I pray for our young men, Lord. I pray for our young ladies, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they get an ear to hear from you. Open up their ears, Lord God. Open up their eyes, God. Let them see the destruction of this music, Lord. Lord, order their steps in your word, Lord. Help us be examples to these young people, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, I'm going to extend an invitation. 
And if he, the word of God, has spoken to anyone in this place, I want you to be mindful of that. And just tell yourself, if no one else, God has spoken to me. God has spoken to me. Music. If you're in the car with the Lord Jesus Christ, would you listen to that music? If you're home with Jesus in the room, would you listen to that music? What is your major concern now? Listen. This is a day God perhaps ordered yourself to be here to hear that word and say when I leave this place I am going to leave in a different way I am going in a new direction churches are closed now people are giving up but God said alive God said alive and don't kid yourself if one of the old Patriarch said, even the devil is God's devil. And God can permit him and God can hinder him. Whatever he so desires to do. If you have been aggravated, tormented by the enemy, right now we're going to pray. If you seem to have been hindered and you can't do what you want to do when you want to do it, we're going to pray before we leave the place. And no question about it. Music is powerful. That's why we, we term this time of the service as prayer, praise, and preach. Music is powerful. Let's leave the place a different way. Let's go home and be a, an example to our children. Let's be the church when we leave the church. Come on, come on, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it. On next Sunday at 10 to 10.30, I'm gonna have a dining room opening for all the ones who are lounging around on the outside from 10 to 10.30. I don't like that. From 10 to 10.30, we're gonna be in the dining room and we're gonna discuss some things together rather than just lounging around doing nothing. Let us pray. What an awesome word. What an awesome word. Where are you today? Are you totally committed to Lord Jesus Christ? God, Holy Spirit lives in you. And he wants nothing shorter than a total commitment to him. Father God, today as we stand here, getting ready to leave this place after hearing such an awesome word from you someone standing here perhaps right now doesn't know which way to go but God in the mighty name of Jesus order their step by your Holy Spirit someone standing at the crossroad perhaps does not know which way to turn. But God, give a clear sense of direction. Don't let us leave here the way we came. Hey! In the name of Jesus, we pray. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory. Change our mind, change our attitude. And God, we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise today do it today and before we leave the place God we lift up those who are sick among us those in the hospital those who've lost loved ones call for special prayer we lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus and we thank you for healing we thank you for deliverance we thank you for what you have done, what you are done, what you're going to do. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Thank you. Come on, give God a praise. Thank you. Praise.